everyone, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. First off, uh, apologies for the lighting. My ring light literally just broke, like right before I was about to film this video, a screw popped off of it. And um, it's what connects the actual ring light to the tripod. So currently, uh, can't you using that? <laughs> so happy 2022. We're starting the year off on a good note with my equipment breaking. I love it. So apologies if the lighting is not the best. Uh, I tried to make sure that I wasn't backlit, but my, the lighting in here is like not great already. So without the ring light, it kind of sucks. So I guess I'm gonna have to work on getting that fixed. So that's a fun new project for me. Uh, but other than that, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year, everyone. For my first official video of the new year, I'm gonna kick it off with a video that I normally film every year. And that is telling you all about my top five favorite albums from the previous year, which that is being 2021. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start at five and work my way to one, one being my top album of the year, and at the end, I will just tell you guys a few of my honorable mentions that didn't make the list. So starting off at number five, we have Scaled and Icy by 21 Pilots. This album definitely took me a few listens to really get into it, but once I did, I was really vibing with it. Uh, I saw them back in October, kind of on this tour, so you know I was really excited to hear all the songs live. And personally, like, I don't think every single song on the album is amazing, and that's why it's lower on the list. But I think 80% of the songs are super catchy, and I really enjoy them, so that's why it still made the list. And um, it's very much a dancey 21 Pilots album. I mean, you can definitely see the progression and the maturity in this album. Um, just because it, it definitely has more of a positive dancey feel. There's not that many, you know, sad emo songs. You know, things like Truce and Goner that were on previous albums. You don't seem to really see songs like that on this album, which I think maybe that's why I was a little hesitant the first time I heard it, because I was like, are they just kind of going like pop? Are they just, you know, making like upbeat music because that's what they know the radio will play? But then as I listened to it more, I actually kind of understood the deeper meaning behind it. And I just really enjoy the songs. I think they're really good, dancey vibe. Uh, it seems very much like a feel-good album for 21 Pilots, which is a, a different, you know, different thing for them. And it's nice to see. My favorite songs from the album are Shy Away, No Chances, and Saturday. Number four on my list is Glow On by Turnstile. The songs on this album are extremely catchy and the beats honestly just like make me want to dance and mosh all the time. Um, I was able to see them on tour for this album back in the fall and while well, the crowd was kind of crazy, <laughs> uh, hearing them play these new songs were so much fun. This album got Turnstile so many new fans. Um, which I know is good or bad. You can say they went a bit more mainstream with this album, but I think it's a great album. I think they deserved all the new fans they got from this album. Um, it was definitely nice to be at the show and just like see new faces there who hadn't seen them before. And people were going off to these songs because they are so catchy. And I think it's a really refreshing sound for Turnstile. I love all of Turnstile's albums and just seeing them on this tour for this album was insane because of all the beat drops and so many of these songs. I mean, people were going nuts and this album just makes me want to dance and mosh. It is so much fun. I also love the transitions between songs and the interlude tracks, I think, really pull the whole thing together as almost a concept album. There's all these like fun space and, and psychedelic like sounds that are put in throughout the album and I think that makes it flow very, very well. My favorite songs on the album are Mystery, Holiday, and Blackout. My third favorite album of 2021 is Life in Your Glass World by Citizen. I've talked about this one a lot in the past year. A lot of the songs from it were on my top songs of 2021, and it's really a great album. I think it's very much a groovy Citizen record, which I can't really say about their older stuff. Their older stuff is definitely more emo and depressing, and this album is very much like I don't know, just just more like groovy and vibey and dancey and a little bit more of a feel-good Citizen album, which I think is a cool change. Um, it's definitely a mature album for Citizen and it's a refreshing sound for the band. Like I was very impressed by the instrumentation and the beats. I think that the album was mixed very well. And uh, once again, I got to see them on tour for this album back in December and it was fantastic. Like all the new songs were just great live. They were up there just like grooving. And I really just think it's a refreshing sound for the band that has once again also brought in a lot of new listeners. So this band has not ceased to be writing new music and I'm very, very proud of them. My favorite songs from the album are Pedestal, Death Dance Approximately, and Blue Sunday. My second favorite album of 2021 is If the Problems Persist by Rationale, which like a lot of people are not talking about when this is such a good album. 
Um, every song is catchy. If you don't know who Rationale is, yeah, check them out. If you're from Chicago, you probably do, but you might not if you're from other parts of the world or in the country. Um, essentially, it is a band created by Joe Taylor, Dan Lampton, and Ryan Rumchex. So it's basically Knuckle Pug, Real Friends, and Homesick combined. And it's amazing. Uh, I got to see actually the album release show, which was Rationale's second ever show back in October. And uh, I actually got the, the tickets from a subscriber. Uh, he just wasn't able to go and gave me tickets for free. And man, thank you so much if you're watching because it ended up being such an amazing show. It helped me really get into Rationale. And it was just wild to be seeing Joe like not singing. He's he's playing on guitar and Ryan is drumming and like Dan was playing guitar and singing. Like it was kind of a trippy moment, but um they're a great great little side project band and this album is so good. Every song is catchy and yeah, just if you like Knuckle Puck Real Friends and Home Safe, like you'll probably love this album. Uh, I think it flows together really well as well, and it's just um, feel good emo music. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like the three bands that, you know, comes from. Like, it's just really fun, upbeat sounds from Knuckle Puck, and then you get the, the real friends vocals on some of it, but also Joe sings a little bit too, so you get kind of Knuckle Puck vibes. And yeah, I just think the instrumentation is fantastic. I was very, very pleasantly surprised listening to this. The songs were stuck in my head for weeks, and um, yeah, it's a really, really great album. So if you haven't checked it out, please check it out. My favorite songs are Market Scheme, A Shift in My Beliefs, and Caution and Pressure. And finally, my number one favorite album of 2021, which I don't know, might come as a shock to some of you, I'm not sure. It is Pushback by Jetty Bones. You guys know I love Jetty Bones. They are my favorite like female-fronted band. Um, but like even more so, I have been following them for many, many years now. And this is their debut full-length album, and I am just so proud of them for it. I think for a debut full-length release, it was a very, very impressive release for the band. You can tell that the lead singer, Kelsey, who's, you know, the face of the band, really put her heart into this record. And I just love how much the band experimented with different genres and sounds in this one record. I actually ended up getting the vinyl for Christmas. You guys would know that if you guys watch my Christmas haul. And, uh, you know, the inside had a sleeve that had like a thank you note and information about the album. After listening to this album for almost a year, it came out really, really early in 2021, uh, I had a lot of time for to marinate. I was just reading about it in the sleeve in the record. and just learning so much more about what the lyrics really mean and what really like happened to Kelsey in the last year or two and how you know she's taking stories that happened to her and putting them into the songs like it just made me have a deeper appreciation for the album and love them even more so yeah I just think that it's a very heartfelt album that the lyrics I don't know I can relate to some of them but I just I love her songwriting style and so I just think that the band came together and made this beautiful record also, I want to say, like, this might not be the most incredible album musically compared to the others on this list or even others that came out last year and things, but I, it's one that I'm really the most proud of and it's the one that resonates with me the most and means a lot to me. You know, I don't think, like I said, that it's the um, most musically impressive out of all of these. But, you know, this is my list, this is this, my favorites, and this album, I had high hopes for this album in uh, 2020, like, I was really excited to hear the full-length album, debut full-length album for Jetty Bones, and it just did not disappoint. It has a lot of fun quirks. If you want to go back and watch my full album review of it, I'll link that up here. But, yeah, I was just so pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with it and proud of Kelsey and the rest of the band, and I hope to see them on tour at some point soon because I really want to hear these new songs live. But yeah, it just really touched my heart for being a longtime fan for them. So definitely check it out if you haven't. Give it a listen. It's not for everyone, but you might like it. And um, yeah, that is my number one album of 2021. My favorite songs from the album are Bad Time, Bug Life, and Taking Up Space. And finally, I'm just gonna put out a few honorable mentions. Um, if I had to, you know, pick like a six, seven, eight, nine, I don't know what 10 would be. I only have four honorable mentions, but uh, they would be Pacifico by Surfaces, another fantastic release that came out this year. I saw them kind of on tour for this album. They, This album really helped me get into Surfaces even more, and I think it's a really, really great pop, like, vibey summer album. And then another one that I really liked was If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power by Halsey. I'm sure some of you guys might be surprised this didn't make it higher up in the list because Halsey's my favorite solo artist. Um, honestly, I didn't listen to this as much as I probably should have this year and it just didn't stick with me as much as like 
Manic did when Manic came out in 2020. Like that was really like, non-stop on repeat. This album wasn't, but I really like the concept behind it. I'm gonna keep listening to it more this year and um, probably get into it more. But just at the end of the year, it didn't quite make the cut for being higher up, but I love it. I love the album. I still love Halsey. Don't think I don't. So um, yeah, it's definitely gonna be an honorable mention. Another one would be Below by Beartooth, longtime Beartooth fan. Kind of same thing. I just didn't end up listening to this one as much as I thought I would, but it has a lot of really, really great bops. I love all the singles. I still listen to it when I work out and stuff, but like other than that, I just didn't find myself coming back to it a ton. I also wasn't able to go to the date of their tour for this album, and if I had been planning on going to that, I probably would have listened to the album more and maybe gotten into it more. So another one I'm gonna keep listening to in the new year. And then finally, my last honorable mention is gonna be OK Human by Weezer. Uh, in if you guys watched my Spotify Wrapped video, you'll know that this showed up a ton in my top 100 songs of last year, really because it came out in January and it was like the first album that came out for 2021, and so I was listening to it a lot then. I also did an album review of it, but um, yeah, it's really funny how much of this album is in my top 100 songs because it's not very high up on this list, but I thought I'd put it on because I did listen to it a lot. I did pretty much learn the entire album, and I did end up seeing Weezer last year. I heard some of these songs live, and I think it was a fun concept album for them. But there you guys go. That is my list of my top five favorite albums of 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what your favorite albums of last year were. I would love to know. Tell me your favorite songs off them. Tell me why you love them. Tell me if any of the ones that I mentioned are also on your list because I would love to hear it. And other than that, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.